hello guys how are you doing welcome back to this amazing youtube channel where we share various tech information or it information that help us to grow our tech skills so if you're new here karibu sana because you're definitely in the right place please check on my previous videos and watch them leave a like on each and every video remember to also share the videos as much as possible because the main aim of this youtube channel is to share uh, it knowledge as much as much as possible so i'd really really appreciate if you guys share my videos to as many people as possible also kindly consider subscribing to this youtube channel if you're watching right now and you haven't subscribed kindly kindly consider subscribing so my name is lona and i'm a container management engineer so what i basically do is to make sure that containers running in, in various platforms such as kubernetes or openshift um aws EKS are running okay they're healthy and of course the applications also running in them are okay so in this video today i want us to talk about the reason for the removal of docker shim from kubernetes i know you've heard about it or you've read about it um kubernetes just uh the other day um announced that they no longer support docker or rather docker shim and i thought that maybe i should do a video to help us understand what really happened and of course guys by the end of the video let me know what you think about it if you have any comment anything to add please feel free to use the comment section because as i said guys i'm not perfect we are all learning together and i would really really love that we grow one another so feel free to share what you think in the comment section any addition any suggestion kindly let me know in the comment section so let's get straight into the video the reason why Dokashim is no longer supported in kubernetes so before that kindly let's understand a number of things number one of those things that i really want us to understand is cri cri stands for container runtime interface so this is the main protocol of communication between kubelet which is a component of kubernetes and container runtime which is actually the component that enables you to create and run your containers remember uh, Kubernetes. I hope um, you've used Kubernetes or you've read about how Kubernetes works. Kubernetes has uh, two components. There's the master, or rather the control plane, and the worker nodes. And there are different types of components that run in both um, the control plane and the worker nodes. One of these components is the Kubelet. Kubelet actually is done that facilitates creation of containers. So any request to create a container or a pod or a deployment, all these are facilitated by Kubelet. But remember, Kubernetes by itself is just an orchestration tool. So being a, an orchestration tool, it cannot create containers by itself. So it requires a container runtime. So container runtime is the one that facilitates creation of containers, like from, you know, uh, unpacking of images to creation of containers, you know, isolation of containers into namespaces and C groups. All those is facilitated by a container runtime. So Kubernetes needs to have a container runtime for it to be able to create containers. And therefore, there has to be communication between Kubelet because Kubelet is the one that sees that, you know, a cluster has to be in this way a cluster has to have a, a deployment or it has or this node needs to run this pod all that is the work of the kubelet so kubelet has to communicate so whenever kubelet says that you know we need to have a pod running in these nodes it uh, communicates with the container runtime to be able to create that container so what facilitates that communication is what we call container runtime interface cri Another thing that I really want us to understand also is OCI. OCI stands for Open Container Initiative. So Open Container Initiative is a set of, it's a set of standards um, for you know, creation of images and running of containers. So it spe uh, specifies some standards for image uh, specific, uh, how to create images and how to run containers so you have oci image specification for images and of course oci runtime specifications for running um containers now having understood uh, those two things let's go back to our the flow here so before when kubernetes was still using docker this is how the flow was um Another thing that I also want us to understand is container runtime. As I've said, container runtime is one that facilitates creation of containers. That is from uh, unpacking of images. When you download an image or when you pull an image from any registry, you unpack that image and uh, you create a container. That all that is facilitated by a container runtime. So a container runtime actually has two main tasks. We have the high level container runtime task and the low level container runtime tasks. And as you can see here, I've actually tried to um, explain the high level container runtimes and the low level container runtimes. So when you talk about the high level container runtimes, these are the runtimes that um, manages the images. For example, now when you pull an image, as I've said, there's the unpacking of that image and there's the creation of the container. So a high level um, container runtime is actually, actually takes care of images. And then the low level container runtime is one that takes care of, you know, um, creating the the containers in isolated you know namespaces and uh, c groups 
okay? So now, um, an example of a high-level container runtime is container D, and I've said this is the one that mostly takes, takes care of, uh, the mostly take care of images, and then the low level, which actually take care of, you know, isolation of containers into namespaces and C groups, is the low-level container runtime. So now, uh, one of those popularly known runtimes for low level is RANC. Remember, there are also um, uh, other container runtimes that actually do both the high level and the low level task. And then an example is the Rocket, Rocket uh, Container Runtime, or rather RKT. So, in terms of um, Docker, Docker actually comes with. Uh, Container D by default, that is its high level uh, container runtime. And then it also runs run C as the low level container runtime. So, and then the other implementations for high level, such as here, CRI, also you can also read about that one. So, when, when you are using a Docker in Kubernetes, remember Docker by itself, as it is when you install Docker, it cannot like um, run containers unless it has all these components that come together to enable you to run containers. So I'm, I've talked about the container runtime, which definitely we have container D and the run C, and then of course the Docker daemon. So when you install Docker, it has to install all those components for you to be able to run um, containers using Docker. So this is the reason why Kubernetes has been using Docker for the longest time, because it comes with um, the container runtimes for you to be able to create um, containers using uh, Kubernetes. But now with Kubernetes, remember I've said Kubernetes is an orchestration tool. So there has to be a way of communication between Kubernetes and the Docker container runtime. In this case, it's container D. So this is why um, we have CRI. So CRI is any form of communication, any, it's the main protocol of communication. You can see here I've defined the main protocol of communication between Kubernetes, which is an, a component of Kubernetes, and the container runtime. So in this case, when you're using Docker, we have Kubernetes and we have here container D. Of course, there's the Docker daemon, which talks to container D. So it's basically like Kubernetes is communicating with the container um, the Docker daemon, which then communicates with the container runtime. So uh, that contain that communication between Kubernetes and uh, the Docker daemon, which then communicate with uh, the container runtime, is facilitated by what we call container runtime interface. Now the issue here was Docker does not support, or rather, is not um, is not CRI compliant. So if you have Docker here having all those components, without this Docker shim, you are not able to communicate with uh, Kubernetes for you to create containers in Kubernetes because Docker by itself is not CRI compliant. And that is where all the issues came from. So now uh, Docker not being uh, CRI compliant, we needed to have something else to enable that communication between Kubernetes and the container runtime. So that is why Docker shim came into existence here so that it facilitates that communication. So Docker Shim is CRI compliant, and now it facilitates the communication between Kubernetes and the container runtime for you to be able to run your containers in Kubernetes. So as you can see, uh, all these, there's a lot of things happening in the background. You have Docker by itself having a number of components, and then now you're introducing Docker Shim, which adds into that complexity so that you have your everything now running so that you're able to create your containers in Kubernetes. So this is where the issue was, guys. This Docker not being CRI compliant. And I've said CRI is that main communication protocol between Kubernetes and the container runtime. So without CRI, um, you're not able to use that container runtime to create your containers in Kubernetes. So we had to, intro they, had to they had to introduce Docker shim that supports or rather that is CRI compliant for them to be able to communicate between the Kubernetes cluster and the container runtime to create or to destroy containers and all that. So this is where everything, um, you know, the, all the complexity was brought. And you see, there's a lot happening. You know, remember Docker is coming with a lot of components as I've already explained. Kubernetes has a lot of components running in the background. And now you're introducing Docker Shim to facilitate that, that CRI or rather that communication, that communication between Kubernetes and the container runtime. So the thought was, what if we don't have, um, what if we just have the communication between Kubernetes and container D or any runtime that you're using in this case, it could be CRIO without having this Docker and Docker shim. Is it possible? And the answer is yes, it's possible. So now that means you remove Docker shim because if it's possible to have a communication, direct communication between Kubernetes and container D through CRI, 
then there's no need for us to have docker shim in this case. So that means removing docker shim, we no longer need docker daemon. So if you remove docker shim, remember docker shim was uh, supporting communication between kubelet and the docker daemon, which then speaks to the container runtime. So removing docker shim means you don't need docker daemon anymore. So this was removed, this was removed. Now we have kubelet communicating with container D directly through the CRI, the com uh, container runtime interface. And now we come here. So as you can see, this is now what's happening, the communication. But remember, we still need something that is CRI compliant to facilitate that communication. So that means that our container D has to have something that is CRI compliant to facilitate that communication directly between Kubelet and container D. And we have a plugin in CRI, we have a CRI plugin within container D that actually facilitates that communication. And it makes everything simpler, it makes everything easier. As you can see, it's just a very nice, simple, you know, uh, flow. So Kubernetes will be running its components within the Kubernetes cluster. And of course, now we have container D, just container D as runtime, container runtime, having a CRI plugin that now uh, enables that simple communication, removing all the complexity that we had with Docker, uh, having Docker, having all the components of Docker, and having Docker Shim to facilitate the, you know, CRI compliance. So remember, you can run Container D, not necessarily having to install Docker. So probably someone will be asking if you remove Docker and uh, Docker Shim, then how will uh, how will you remain with Container D? So in as much as Container D comes with Docker by default, that's okay. But you can actually install Docker without. I mean, you can actually install Container D without having to install Docker. So it's not like it's a dependency for Container D to have Docker. No, it can run by itself as a container runtime. So that's why you can actually have Container D without having Docker and Docker Shim, and you can still run your containers in Kubernetes just with Kubelet and Container D. So that's basically it. The reason is, be is because of the complexity, just finding a way to remove the complexity. Um, because Kubernetes has used a CRI protocol for communication. And since you need something that supports CRI, Docker being not able, or rather it's not CRI compliant, we needed to introduce something else, which by itself introduces a lot of complexity in the journey of using Kubernetes to create your container. So removing these two removes the complexity and just having container D or any runtime like CRI or CRI by itself is CRI compliant just from the from its name. But now container D, it needs to have a CRI plugin to facilitate that communication between Kubelet and itself that uh, the runtime to be able to run your containers in Kubernetes. So that's basically the reason to remove the complexity and have something that's simple enough and is CRI compliant. So that's it. That's it. <laughs> Nothing much. And uh, I hope that my explanation is clear. And if you feel that I've left out anything or there's something important that you feel like I should have mentioned, please, please feel free to leave it in the comment section. Guys, we are learning together. I'm not the master here. I know something little which I'm willing to share with everyone. And I'm also really, really willing to learn from any one of you. So that's why I'm saying, please feel free to comment in the comment section. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the videos, guys. And kindly share the videos as widely as possible. The future of this YouTube channel is beyond me. It's beyond you. It's about reaching as many people as possible, not only through the YouTube channel, but even physically by visiting different places just to take the 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 gospel of it yeah you can call it that but uh, actually um i feel like it's really important that we reach as many people as possible and enable all of us to grow our it skills and become you know be able to use those skills to um grow our lives and become better in the society so until next time guys goodbye please share the video subscribe and watch to the end goodbye